This is the finance doctor. And I want to turn this call over to none other than Dr. Craig Bythewood. Dr. Bythewood, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Thank you, Miss Tasha M. Dyer, aka the Trade Whisperer. Let me welcome everyone to a talk with the finance doctor, your RX for Forex. Let me begin by explaining to the 111s one uh, why we're here. Thank you, Miss Tate, for complimenting me on my tie. No L in the last name. I think I'll start off with that. So let me begin by <clears throat> explaining to the 111ers what this call is about. So it's called a talk with the finance doctor, your RX for Forex. And we named it that because we recognize that we all come to the table with uh, some economic wounds, uh, some scenarios that we've gone through, some dreams that may not have been fulfilled just yet. And it sometimes leads to pain. You know, money is a very supercharged emotional issue. And so this conversation is designed for us to theoretically and metaphorically write a prescription for us to feel better about who we are why we are, how we are, and what we need to do to get to the next level of wealth and abundance. And we purposely chose that preposition with, because this is a talk with the finance doctor, so we expect this to be a dialogue. So with Ms. Dyer's outstanding high-level training, the best format is for you to put your questions in the chat. In this format, it's a little bit more intimate, it's a little bit more of a dialogue, so I expect you to walk in the power of the unmuted microphone by removing that diagonal red line if you have a question. The other thing I want you to understand about this call is this. Personal finance is the only area of our society where the only people that explain to you the way a personal financial product works happen to be the same people who sell you the product. So it is critical in this form that you understand, here's an opportunity for you to ask questions about the entire economic pie. What do you mean by that, finance doctor? Well, what we're doing here, this $6.6 .6 trillion a day industry, this $11 trillion a day industry, if you add the cryptocurrency space, this is a very major slice of the economic pie. But as we continue to ascend to new paradigms, as we can continue to walk in a higher level of wealth and abundance, we want to understand the entire pie. So this is a forum where you can ask any question that you possibly can ask that will benefit your household. So let's be clear. You are just as sharp as I am. You just happen to have been exposed to a different area of interest. So what do I mean by personal financial products? Any decision that you make, anything that requires money out of your household or, or brings money into your household, that's considered personal finance. So within that realm, we answer, we can answer any questions. So again, for the benefit of the one more wonders, I received my PhD in finance and economics 26 years ago. And I'll give you a quick analogy to let you know why I feel this can be a forum that you can really enjoy. So I saw a, a young lady today that I'm very fond of, and she's a basketball player. And I asked her, hey, have you been training over the summer? And she answered the question. Well, that's the type of question I would ask because I have three daughters that play basketball, and I am a basketball coach at both high school and travel basketball. So I say all that to say this. When I coach fifth graders, one of the things that I do is I make sure that they understand that you always have to be ready. So in order to make young basketball players ready, especially girls, I put them in what is called triple threat. Triple threat is a scenario where at any time you're prepared to do one of three things. You can shoot, you can pass, you can dribble, but the defense doesn't know which one you're going to do. So you put yourself in a triple threat. First point. My adult professional life has been a lot like that because I've had the opportunity to be a professor where I get to see things from a theoretical and research perspective. I've been the opportunity, I've had the opportunity to be a chief financial officer multiple times where I could see inside the business how things work and how the interactions work within money going in and money going out. Then I've also been the opportunity, I had the opportunity to be a consultant 
where I can look down and get a bird's eye view of the way the financial and economic scenario works. So that triple threat perspective really prepares me to be able to handle whatever question you have. Another thing that I want to say, as I was saying that, think about it. I'm telling these young ladies to be ready because the defender does not know what you're going to do and you're going to prepare yourself. Guess what? That's a great analogy for what we're doing here because the defender in this situation is the fact that, yes, a fact is going to be a defender in my analogy because there's a fact that 92% of the resources in America, excuse me, 92% of the resources in the world are controlled by 1% of the population. So if we're going to shift that, if we're going to make the numbers be more equitable to us, because each one of these rectangles represent a household that's counting on you to come out of this call and all the other trainings better off. There are children's children unborn who are relying on you to take advantage of this opportunity so your family can have a different life. So you need to be in triple threat. You need to be ready. You need to understand that there are three things you need to do. Number one, you need to educate yourself and have every opportunity to learn this skill set. Number two, you need to dial in because we're providing some valuable trainings here. And number three, and most importantly, you need to have the proper mindset. And that is one of the things that we do on this call, making sure that you have the proper mindset. Now, before I look at the chat and see the statement that was just made, I want to quickly address something before we finish part three of our derivatives and futures conversation. Part three of our derivatives and future conversation. It's very common with my unique name for people to put the L in it. And someone just put in the chat, Blythewood. And people have been doing that all my life. In fact, there have been people who've argued with me. Oh, no, there's Ellen. So let me give you the quick history because one of the bifidisms that you would see if you ever get a personal email from me is that if you know what you're doing, you will always have a job. If you know why you're doing it, you will always be the boss. So let me give you a wireization so you always spell my last name correctly. So during slavery times in the mid 1800s, a group of slaves was purchased by a plantation owner who happened to be from England. That was where his citizenship was. So he worked those slaves on the plantation. In 1865, there was a governmental mandate called the Emancipation Proclamation, which said, you now have to free these slaves. Well, this particular individual felt that he was getting around the rules because he was of English, uh, British citizenship. Therefore, he did not feel like he had to adhere to that. Some abolitionists found out about the fact that he was doing that. They went to the plantation to let those free slaves know, hey, you're supposed to be free. Well, he found out about it. Somebody tipped them off, and so he fled. And you know as well as I do that it's commonplace for you to take the last name of the slaveholder and pass it on to the slaves. Well, since he fled, there was no paperwork. There was no record of the last name. They had to give these group of slaves a last name, and the plantation was by the woods. So, by the woods, by the woods, no L. Plus, there's nothing about what we do here that would reflect an L. So, I said all that to say this. What we're doing tonight is we are talking about the fact that this is our third time in a row discussing the scenario of <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much, Clackers. I appreciate that. This is our third time making sure that we finish this conversation. So a little backdrop for the one 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 ers We're on a mission right now to be our own bank. Being your own bank means that you control the infrastructure. Of course, you're your own business. But you want to be in a position to be able to control your economic infrastructure. You want to hold economic equity in your life, but also in this world. One of the things that we do every single live trading call is we ensure that we put ourselves in a position to affirm who we are and what we are and why we are. As soon as we do that, guess what we do? We check the news. We look at Forex Factory, we look at FX Street because we understand that although trading is a technical scenario for the one on one -ers. Technical simply means you're taking time and price and analyzing it. That's what a chart is. 
A chart is simply an indication or an analysis of time and price. Remember, y equals mx plus b, that's all it is. It is a line based on these two variables. What are the two variables? The currency price or the industry price, whatever it is, or also time. So as a result of that, that's technical analysis. But we also know that fundamental analysis, mean, meaning scenarios that could affect the currency, scenarios that, are, that could affect the strength and weakness also come into play. So we're on a trek right now. We're on a quest right now to make sure that all of the news that we look at, all the things that we study, all of the things we come in contact with, when the Federal Reserve Chairman comes on TV and talks, we want to be prepared to understand what's being said. So one of the things that we started to talk about was this. Quick recap for the one 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 on why we did this to talk with the finance doctors ago. We established the fact that Mr. Powell, the Federal Reserve Chairperson, made a lot of comments about the futures market or the derivatives market. And we also understood that if we're truly going to take advantage of all the tools that we have in IM Academy, we need to understand how derivatives work. So what we talked about two classes ago, two talk with the finance doctors ago, was simply that a derivative is a financial market that comes from something else. It is derived from something else. So if you want to go back to that training from last Tuesday, I gave a quick analogy about a football game that was going on in Maryland and some gambling that was happening as a result of the football game. So the gambling was derived from the football game. So all I'm saying is there's a market that already exists. And then the derivation, the derivative, the option, the future is simply a financial product that derives from that. And I know that if we demystify this, if we understand it to a great degree, we'll put ourselves in a better position. Here's another example why this is so relevant to us. So many of you take advantage of the fact that at 6 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, you can ride the wave of the indices. Well, wait a minute, how can that be? Because all three of our indices are denominated with United States-based companies, or at a minimum, because some of them aren't, at a minimum, they're using USD dollars and the market's not open. How could it be moving on Sunday night? Well, the answer to that is because of the impact of forwards and futures. So very quick recap, again, for the one 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 I explained to you on Thursday's call, part two, that the reason why we have a futures market is because of farmers. I explained to you that before 1890, which was the Industrial Revolution, why do we call it that? Because prior to that, there was no industry. Industry was agriculture. Look at the Bible. Everyone's wealth was explained by how many herds of cattle they had, how many sheep they had, how much land they had. So we lived in an agricultural-based society until 1890, when for the first time we had companies making money based on industry. That is why today, in 2020, we still call it the Dow Jones Industrial Average, because it is a reflection of the fact that in 1890, the game changed. So the game changed, we came up with an index to describe it, and here we are talking about it. So I say all that to say this, when farmers recognize that individual items or individual variables like weather or supply and demand or changes in diet, those things could affect their ability to be able to get a certain amount of money for their crop. And when that happened, they were in a position where they were interested in coming up with a financial transaction to hedge their risk. What does hedge mean? Hedge means you take a position on each side. What's the purpose of hedging? To reduce your risk. So what the farmer would do is say, this is the amount of money that I need to pay my bills. But there have been times when the amount of money I get for the crop has been here. So I'm willing to take advantage of the fact that I can get this contracted price. I can agree now to get this in the future when it's harvest time. 
And then I also know it could be this price. I'm willing to give up the ability to receive that price so that I take away the opportunity to get this price by contracting with this price. Well, there has to be someone on the other side of that transaction. That person is called a speculator. So all I'm doing is telling you the origin. Just like I told you, the origin of my surname, that is the origin of why you and I can sit down at our computers or our cell phones Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we can move the indices. Because in 1890, somebody decided that they were going to track the movements of the Industrial Revolution, and because farmers decided they would be in a better position if they entered into a contractual relationship today to be able to save money or to ensure that they get the money they need in the future. So with that backdrop, let's now complete this discussion. So we're describing the fact that there are two markets. There's a spot market, which is now. There's a futures market, which is the future. So anytime you enter into a contract today to have an economic transaction happen in the future, that's the futures market. Let me say it again. Anytime you enter into a contract today that is going to reap a benefit or happen or take place in the future, that's the futures market. Now let's make sure we're all comfortable with terminology. Now, sometimes you hear the word futures, sometimes you hear the word forwards. Understand this. Futures is a pie which represents every single economic market transaction that you contract now for something in the future. A forward is a particular type of futures market. So another slice in the futures market pie is called options. And it is important that you and I understand options. Why? It's important because it will be part of the tool belt that you and I are developing to make sure that we take advantage of the economic pie that we have access to. Two, you're going to be your own bank which means organizationally, you're going to be able to benefit by understanding the way options work. Number three, on Thursday, I explained to you that my membership on a board of directors and our desire to maintain ownership control with our stocks and doing it by having options rather than using the stock is a strategy based on understanding how options work. So if you're interested in the details of that, go to Thursday's training. So here we are. Here we are in a position where I will use the next 11 minutes to teach you something that I have seen individuals pay thousands of dollars for for a certificate. The individuals who want to trade options, and options can sometimes be in their application. Let me say that again. Options can sometimes be in their application risky. So some brokers actually require you go through a training course or have a certification before you can trade options. Those courses sometimes are in excess of $10,000. But now in the next 10 minutes, because I spent a minute explaining it to you, you will have everything that they have. You'll understand this completely in the next 10 minutes. Let's pause. I just want to be thankful about that. So you mean to tell me I can get $10,000 worth of value in 10 minutes? Yes. So here's how it works. There are two types of options. There are two types of options. There are call options and there are put options. Call, C-A-L-L. -L. Put, P-U-T. You'll notice that when I teach these type of concepts, I don't use slides. I don't talk in a way in which you can take notes. I do that on purpose. Because if we're having a conversation, you're feeling it. You're internalizing it. You get it. But we have a tendency sometimes in our learning style that when people are throwing out information, you write it all down. So when you write it all down, you don't necessarily get it. How many times, come on, let's keep it real. How many times in your high school or college environment did you have a whole bunch of notes? And then if somebody said, what was the class about today? You'd say, but I got all these notes. So we talk about it conversationally on purpose because you'll walk away with it. Did I tell you that there are two types of options? Because there are. Thank you, Ms. Anderson, every time. Call, C-A-L-L. -L. A call option is an option to buy. Put, 
P-U-T. A put option is an option to sell. We're almost finished. I may finish with one minute left. So a call option, it, it, this is not the time to ask questions. This is the time to dial in to what I'm saying. And when I finish and you absorb it, think about it. We're going to have to talk with the finance doctors for the next 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But right now, I want you to spend the next 20 seconds dialing in with what I'm saying. And, and let, me, let me be honest. I told you guys in the beginning that this call is about mindset. How about we're real with each other for a second? That is a trick that your ego uses, your conscious mind uses when your subconscious mind wants to elevate. When there's an opportunity for you to learn something that's going to take you to the next level, your conscious brain, your ego will say, hey, look at this. Hey, look at that. Hey, check that text. Hey, check that email. Hey, ask this question. Hear me. I would answer your question. But I know how valuable it is for you to get this seven minutes of value in any other place you'd have to pay for. So there are two types of options. One type of option is called a call option. The other type of option is called a put option. Now, let me give you a general definition of options. An option is you paying for the right to do something. An option is you paying for the right to do something. I told my middle child something on uh, last Wednesday. I said, I want you to do this, 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 and this. Two days passed, and she hadn't done it. So I went off. And one of the things I said was, oh, you think this is an option? And she recognized she has to do it. She wants to live in my house. She wants to have her cell phone. She has to do it. There is no other option. So an option is a right to do something. An option is a right to do something. So what you're doing right now is you're paying for the right to do something in the future. You're paying for the right to do something in the future. You're paying now for the right to do something in the future. Now, we want to understand options in their entirety so we can use them in any context, whether it's membership on a board of directors, whether it's your own bank that you're going to have, whether it's your organization that you're going to create, whether it's your dream desire that is going to take institutional form after you use this process to earn wealth, or if it's using it to trade forex. We want to understand them in general. But a good way for me to explain options to you is with a stop, with a stop. So for this very easy situation, I love taking complexities and breaking them down. Let's use a stock that's $100. You agree with me that if you had to buy an asset, if you had to purchase a stock that costs $100, guess what? It will cost you $100. Well, an option gives you an opportunity to purchase the right to buy that stock. Again, I'm using stock, but we're going to, in our brilliant mind, be able to apply this conceptual breakdown I'm giving you to any type of option. So what we're doing right now is we are paying for the right to have a transaction with that $100 stock in the future. Did I tell you there were two types of options? There are. So we're about to have two conversations about this $100 stock. And I know I have five minutes left. I only need four. Now, if you have a call option, a call option is an option to buy. A call option is an option to buy. Were you aware that a call option is an option to buy? Psychologists say that we need four to six touches with something before it's ours. There is a concept that a call option is an option to buy. Now, let's suppose you buy an option on this stock right now for $2, $2. You didn't buy the stock for $100. You bought an option on the stock and it costs two dollars what is an option an option is a right to buy something right now my daughter had thought she had a right not to do that she learned quickly she does not have that right but you have a right to buy that 100 dollars stock in the future let me be quiet before somebody calls child to take the services on me so you have just now paid two dollars for the opportunity to buy this stock for 100 dollars. now check this out I said a call option is an option to buy. Why would you buy a stock? Because you want the price to go up. Why would you buy a stock? Because you want the price to go up. So here's how it works. You pay $2 for the stock. And if the stock goes up in value, you now can exercise your option. And the difference between what the stock was originally, which is called the exercise price, 
And what it grows to, you can get that profit. So let's suppose the stock goes up to 120. Well, if you bought the stock, you would have paid $100. Then when the stock goes up, then you would have made $20. But now you have the opportunity to make that same $20 because you bought an option today to be able to purchase that stock in the future at $100. So this is what happens. You would exercise your stock. The difference between the $100 exercise price and the 120 market price, that's your profit. So you just made $20. Technically, you only made $18 because you paid $2 for the stock. But the option gives you the ability to be able to control $100 worth of stock for a lesser price and less risk. Well, what if the price goes down? Then you just don't exercise it and you lost $2. Wouldn't you rather lose $2 than $100? So that's the way an option works. Now hear me. The best way to learn this is not to think about what you would do and why you would do it and how you would do it, but just understand how it works. Then we can add the layers of application later. I told you there were two types of options. You just learned about the first one. You just got $5,000 of your $10,000 training. Here's the second one, a put option, a put option. A put option is an option to sell. A put option is an option to sell. So in, in the financial market, when you do what's called a short set, you make money when the stock market, when the stock goes down. For example, if I do a short sale on a stock that's trading at $100 and it goes down to $80, I just make $20 profit. But if I want to do a short sale on a stock that's worth $100, guess what it's going to cost me? $100. But if I buy a put option, I can pay $2 for the right to be able to take advantage of that short sale. So I pay the $2 because I expect the price to go down. I bought a $2 put option. So now if the stock goes down from 100 to 80, I just made $20. But I made $20 by spending $2 instead of $100. Well, actually, I really only made $18 because I made 20 and I paid $2 for the stock. Well, what if, when you short sell that stock or when you buy that put option, it goes up. That's not a money maker for you. So you don't exercise the put option. And now you're in a position where you just lost $2 instead of losing $100. So if you're hearing, if you're feeling what the option is designed for, is for you to have a position of being able to purchase the right to buy something, or let me say that better, you're purchasing the right to have an economic transaction in the future and you can do so at less risk. So as promised, it's 29 minutes after the hour. So let me open it up for questions, comments, or testimonies about options. Please unmute your mic and ask your question. Questions, yeah. yes. comments, testimonies. Please uh, announce, your, tell me where you're from. Yeah, this is uh, Dr. Sneed. Um, I'm from Chicago. Hi, Dr. Sneed. How you doing? I'm actually. I remember. So, um, my training, and I think you did a beautiful job in explaining this because I've actually went through some minor courses. I think I got more out of this than I did the course I took. But I appreciate that. <laughs> making it clear, uh, to clear for me, it does give you the right, but not the obligation to buy the entity. Are you so, asking me or telling me? Yes, I mean, that's what. I, that's yes. what I've read before. You yes. don't have to do it. Right. Like, so that's right. why I use the example of my daughter, because mm -hmm. in that moment of lack of clarity, mm -hmm. she didn't think she had to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> baby, you have to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> by, by the way, she just texted me before this call happened and said she was doing it. Smart. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That was very, very good. It is the right to do it, not an obligation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question, Dr. Steele. Thank you so much for that company. That is literally what we want to do, is provide value by collapsing time frames and giving you things in a, in a much more effective and efficient way. So thank you for recognizing. So I have not spoken to Dr. Steele about this, but she just told you that she's taking certifications before. I'm assuming you had to pay for those 
And, and here we are getting this value for free. God is so good for you. So, questions, comments, testimonies. Dr. Elizabeth Brownlee here. I worked for the telephone company for 33 and a half years, and I've been retired. I can't even I remember how long, but I do remember that they gave us options. And here it is. I never understood those options that they gave us then. And here it is today that I learned what those options are all about. And I'm amazed that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And yeah. that's exactly what has happened tonight. Wow. I, I, all of this is all coming together. And this is kind of little, get off us a little bit uh, uh, somewhat. But there was a comment last week about how all of what Ms. Dyer is teaching was Greek to this individual. And I can attest to the same thing as long as I was bootlegging and just in the group whenever you know I, I could be there. It was like Greek to me. But once I signed up for the academy, and once I go to the academy over and over and listen to you every time I get an opportunity and go back and listen to <clears throat> the videos and watch the videos, every time it's all coming together. And now I can declare that it's no longer sounding like Greek, but I feel that I am a student of Greek now. Love it. Love it, Ms. Brownlee. Thank you. We'll be going to have a talk with Ms. Brownlee. So I really appreciate that, Ms. Brownlee. And I want, when she was talking, I thought about this. I used to live in a city in Florida outside of Tampa called Odessa. And Odessa is right next to a city in Pinellas County called Tarpon Springs. And Tarpon Springs is known for the fact that every single business, every single entity in Tarpon Springs is all Greek. So people from Greece who moved to Florida decided they're going to incorporate this city. So it's all Greek people there. So is Greek Greek to them? No. Greek makes sense to them because they're immersed in that culture because it's who they are. So what Ms. Brownlee just said to you is, if you think it's Greek, you're putting a label on yourself that is going to delay you getting to your desires. It is not Greek if you're Greek. So become Greek. How do you do it? Ms. Brownlee just gave you the formula. Thank you for that, Ms. Brownlee. Questions, comments, testimony. Does anybody else can, have, can ask another question? Yes. With options, does it, I know it expires, but does the price go down? Does the price change at all? Good question. I'm sorry. I should have said that. Three months. You have three months to exercise the option. Because think about it. If it was forever and perpetual, then this economic transaction wouldn't make sense. Thank you for saying that. Options last for three months, 90 days. But they don't, but they don't go down in price or anything. Nothing decreases. I, I, your question is so legitimate. Mm -hmm. But I know what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Our shoulders get tight when something seems that easy. <laughs> now, it's it's got to be another layer to it. It's got to be something that's not that. That's it. You pay two dollars now, and the exercise price is a hundred. Why is it a hundred? Because when you pay the two dollars, that's what it was. It's either gonna go up or go down. Great question. Thank you. Because I'm saying some some other people on this call felt the same way. One one oneers. I talk all the time about the collective consciousness. The Bible says, "Where two or more shall gather." So anytime a group of people are together, we're all energetically matched. We're all vibrating at the same frequency. So that question she just asked, somebody else had the same exact question. Thank you. Questions, comments, testimony. Yeah. Uh, Robert, the answer is yes. So we're supposed to be into this call at the uh, end of the half hour. The person that, that, that did the cryptocurrency question, uh, I'm going I'm to do something very bold because I think that it's important that uh, that we address this. And we're, we're family. We're, we're business partners. 
So I'm going to make the assumption that you're my business partner, and I'm going to ask you to send me an email right after this call, and I'm going to answer that question for you. Because something like that, it shouldn't be a delay. You should get that answer right now. So Dr. 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 Craig Bythewood. Everybody's going to spell it right because you heard the story. Dr. Craig Bythewood at gmail.com. Email me tonight, and we're going to answer that question. So, right, by the word. Questions, comments, testimony. Um, okay, the heads were asking bid to prevent loss. One that's more question. No, that's not what everybody wants. Ms. Dyer talks about that all the time. So one more I think question. That's, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was trying to say, um, do you just pay 10% or whatever it costs? Like, um, if it was 1000 that mean I paid 20 10, 10% of of what what costs? Of what the stock is. Like since you said a hundred and I paid two dollars, does that mean that the stock was a thousand that I have to pay twenty? It's simpler than that. The stock costs a hundred dollars, okay? And so the, the the price, the exercise price is set at that moment. And at that moment, when I buy that two dollar option, the stock is at a hundred. So what I'm doing is I'm predicting what I think is gonna happen to the stock. I think it's gonna go up. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy a car. You know what? I think it's going to go down, so I'm going to buy a put option. So real quick, let's just get, take the options out. If it's a $100 stock and I think it's going to go up, what would I do? I would buy the stock. If it's a $100 stock and I think it's going to go down, I would short sell the stock. All I'm saying is that instead of doing that, you can purchase an option if you think it's going to go up, so you're paying less. You're paying $2 instead of 100 if you think it's going to go down, you do a put option and you're paying two dollars instead of paying for the hundred. So those are the numbers involved. And understand, this is a concept that's very general and very simplistic on purpose because if we understand the, the, the economic infrastructure of it, then as we add layers to it, we'll put ourselves in a better position. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, so I, I feel compelled to go ahead and say something real quick about that question uh, that was asked. So we do not hedge asking bids. And here's why. The answer that I gave you about the farmer is based on the fact that the farmer's just trying to pay his bids. The farmer's trying to take advantage of the fact that there's a fluctuation in the market, and he would rather get rid of that fluctuation of putting himself in a position to be able to pay his bids. There's also somebody on the other side of that transaction who is speculating on what's happening. And guess what? The speculator makes money. The broker makes money. The institution makes money. So all of these things provide value to the, to the economy. When you hedge off a of bid and ask, you're actually using the concept I just described to the farmer, but you're putting yourself in more risk. So we do not hedge based on bid and ask. We do not hedge based on buying and selling because it's actually a riskier proposition. Hedging is supposed to be done to manage cash flow. And that's what that farmer did. So I hope that answers your question. Questions, comments, testimony. Uh, yes, Dr. Bitewood. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Uh, Donald Jones here. Uh, Donald Jones Sr. here. Uh, I just wanted to make a brief comment. Uh, this is my third uh, sit-in with you. And uh, I did raise that, uh, that observation uh, from last week about being uh, uh, the, the information that I'm hearing is uh, Greek to me. And uh, I stated it like that. My spirit stated it like that. I got a bad connection, so I hope uh, I'm not too garbled. Uh, but I stated it like that because I learn this i want to learn this so bad that uh i'm trying to uh get the essence of the uh information is so overwhelming and so much uh that when i made that comment it just i i articulated it as as uh, an analogy that it was sounding greek but uh i knew I, I know that i have to just sit in and just listen to learn and uh but that was the uh, wording that I used to be able to try to make my point. But I just, and I made that observation because I was just wanting to learn it so bad. 
Right. I, I appreciate your and, comment. I'm still sorry. here. I'm still here, and um, you know I'll be here continuous until I get that. But I'm I'm getting a little bit better with it. I just right. want to clarify that that, uh, that observation. Well, well, that here, I here, appreciate that. Sir. I appreciate your comments. I really do appreciate your comments. But I need you to understand, you're not really defending you because we all do that. As humans, we put ourselves in a position where we use words that reflect our vibration. And our vibration is an impactor of what happens. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So I want you to think about what you said. This call is recorded. So when you go back and you listen to your comments, you'll hear yourself having said this three times. I want to learn this so bad. But what if you wanted to learn it so good? If you decided to learn it so good, your shoulders come down, your frequency is, your vibration is smooth. So I'm with you. All I'm saying is the word choice we use, which is a reflection of the vibration, which is a reflection of the frequency, which is a reflection of the thought, we get there quicker when we make it be something that isn't Greek but something that's smooth and easy. There's an African proverb that says, how does an ant eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So sometimes we humans, excuse me, all the time we humans have a tendency to make it elephant tiny. We look at how big it is, use the word overwhelming. All I'm suggesting, Mr. Joe, is simply that you make a decision right now to just look at the first bite. The first bite is, is not overwhelming. Is the whole elephant overwhelming you? I'm just deciding, I'm just suggesting that you will get to your desire so much quicker if you just look at that bite in a smooth and easy fashion rather than looking at the whole. It's the same bite. It's the same goal. We already know you're going to win. This just gets you to the finish line quicker. Thank you so much for saying that. Last question, Dr. Dr. Testimony. I'm sorry, Dr. Blythewood, I must say this to that gentleman. My comment was an encouragement to yes. whoever said it was Greek to yes. get into the academy, mm -hmm. which will bring it all together and right. it will make sense then. My, acad my, my encouragement is to not only get into the academy, but go over that information and over that information. That was it, that's why I said that it was an encouragement to that individual. That's exactly the way I interpreted Ms. 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 Brownlee. And what I really want to reiterate by us having this conversation is every one of us thinks like that. Every one of us does that. All I'm suggesting is that we increase our awareness of it so we can flip it and we can focus. That is why we stay Amen. every single car. I am a master trainer. We don't say, well, it's going to take a while for me to master this training. That's a different image. Let me do that again. I am a master trainer. Well, it's going to take me a while to master this training. Those two energies feel different. So there's no need of justifying what every single human does. It's just you got on this call, and this is your third call, bro. You're good. Imagine where you're going to be on your 30th call. Imagine where you're going to be on your 300th call. You're in the right place, in the right vehicle, with the right energy, and this is the collective consciousness of love. We're all going to get there. That's why we come together 40 plus times a month. Questions, comments, I, testimony. That's I make one more right. comment. You did sir. say one more comment, right? I know. I lied. I, guess, I lied. I did. <laughs> oh. Can I make one more? Yes. Uh, Donald Jones here again. Uh, my first call, uh, Ms. Brown made a comment about you and, uh, and how she felt your spirit. That was my first call. After that call, I must have sent that. I got my daughter to get that recording for me. It inspired me so. Wow. I must have sent it to about eight different people. So I'm wow. in this classroom, I'm in this family, and wow. what, I'm, what I may have said in that second oh, and even have... day, it was the first call that I heard that Ms. Brown made her testimony about what she got out of uh, this, this, this forum. 
and yeah. especially from your council. So yes. thank you. That's what I wanted also. Thank you Money. so much. Oh, sorry, my name is Angela Zeiss, and I'm uh, from Jacksonville, Florida. I just have to say, I am truly, truly blessed and highly favored to have encountered, you know, um, individuals like you all. Because I was the one that asked the question about the hedge. Um, yes. I went to this the whole this hotel, and um, there was this company. It was Trader something. It won't come to me right now, but they were asking for a lot of money, but we did not get the the training, the education, the teaching. And now that my steps have been ordered by the Lord, it's like, I'm, I'm really learning in leaps and bounds. And this is truly a blessing. I, I mean, I would say for the price, it's a very low, low price because you all are really giving the, the foundation and you're really taking the time and I can see the compassion and what you all are doing. And I really applaud you all for that. You know, it's like there's a pulpit. It don't have to always be in church, but y'all have one just out here in the marketplace. And, you know, God got his people in certain places. But, you know, I was skeptical with certain things, but it was something about this one. It was different. I, I can't mm -hmm. explain it. It's just, um, I remember Bishop TJ said something um, just real quick. He said, you know, you know when you, you just know. It's kind of like the, the no. And this right here is it. And I just applaud you all. Thank thank y'all. You know, thank y'all. Miss Exodus, thank you so much for that testimony. Okay, I'm gonna trick y'all. 40 more comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wouldn't have rush. <laughs> See how that works? Not not nobody else has anything else to say. All right. So listen, seriously. I really do appreciate everything that has been said tonight because we are sincere in our desire to financially impact 1 million families by the year 2021. So you are part of that. What you're saying right now, somebody sending the video to eight people, that's an impact in eight or other eight more families. That, that is what this is about. So let me share a prophetic word that I'm feeling right now. Some of you know that there are people in your circle that need Jesus with us. And you've chosen not to tell them because of how you think they're going to. It's not about them. It is about their children. It is about their children's children. You have an opportunity to bless them. So nobody has any concern about blessing. Concern and bless don't, don't go together. So take the things that have been said tonight that have been specifically designed for you. I, I know I'm talking to somebody right now. You don't have to tell me because I already know that I'm correct. Based on that, tonight, tonight, don't wait until tomorrow because that gives you more time to change your mind and justify it and think about it. You need to share this information from a spirit of blessing. Not convincing, but of blessing. All right. So let me bring on Mr. Rogers uh, right now before we close out this call. Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Bythewood. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to know that we've had another amazing night of impartation from the Trade Whisper itself and then to cap it off with the finance doctor. But ladies and gentlemen, everything that we have decreed, God has allowed it to come to full manifestation. Uh, thank you, Angela, for sharing those kind words, because that, that was always the intent from the very beginning when we sat down and myself and uh, Ms. Dyer and Dr. Bythewood, you know, the vision was given in 2018. And here we are, we are really just getting started. We are just getting started. The month of May, it was BYB cash out in honor of Ms. Dyer's birthday. And you guys stepped in and you begin to cash out. Then we said the month of June was triply fact. So you've had the opportunity to, to experience triple effect with the vibrata. You had the opportunity to experience the harmonic scanner. And tonight it was culminated with uh, the balance back strategy. And once again, triple effect with the finance doctor himself, the derivative market, and being able to simply take what many people have always made it seem to be complex in options in this general sense. And then here's some, an individual with the passion and the conviction 
uh, that each of those have. And then guess what? Here we are speaking right now. It is the 30th of June. But we are right now decreeing and declaring that the month of July starting the next, and it just ties into what Dr. Byford said. We're giving this way, not being concerned, but in blessing. And so the month of July is Family Economic Empowerment Emancipation Month. Yes, we're going to economically emancipate each and every one of our family members, our friends, our neighbors and relatives for the entire month of July. That is going to be the focus. We are going to give this information away from the depths of our heart, knowing that we know that we're doing good by doing good. So the month of July, the BYB family, it is going to be the biggest month ever that we've had because we're going to be premeditated. We're going to be definitive. We're going to operate in excellence and we're going to be extremely benevolent because we are giving this information away because we are now the catalyst of change. We are putting you in a position that you can personally write your own financial narrative. No longer will be allowed to succumb to what people deem our values because of this skill set is designed to increase. So he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And when you are free in your spirit, you are free in your mind, and when you are economically empowered, then the change that the world deserves is going to come from the fruit of your lips and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So I speak to the soul of each person in the spirit, man, and I call you forth. And we're here to cut off the gray clothes. As Jesus told Lazarus to come forth, he was very specific because he spoke, and when he spoke, everything moved. But I'm specifically cutting off the gray clothes and ensuring that you dive in, you plug in, you stay committed. And we're going to cut the gray clothes off you as a family so that everyone can be free and operate in excellence, the authority and the grace that you and I have been given to change the world. So Dr. Bythewood, thank you. Ms. Dyer, thank you. And each and every one of you, as Dr. Bythewood would say, each rectangle, you have a responsibility now to speak truth to power. And now you've been designed, you've been called, appointed, and anointed for the, the earth is looking for those who he can find someone else strong again. And you shall, will, have done great exploits. Back to you, Dr. Bythewood. Mr. Rogers, can you please close us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come right now first of all, saying thank you for the manifold grace that you've given us. We thank you for being able to illuminate our minds and giving us a heart to walk in the authority that you've given us. We release the freedom of wealth and abundance according to your word for you said it is you that gives us a power to obtain wealth. And the purpose of our wealth is not for us to be glorified, but that your covenant will be established to remind the world that I am, that I am. So Father God, we come right now, submit it to your authority, submit it to your will, commit it to your purpose, that out of darkness, you called us into your marvelous light. So the light that's in us, when we show up, the atmosphere must change. We create right now through the verbiage and the vibration that we destroy the yokes of bondage that have held our people bound mentally, physically, emotionally, as well as financially. So we thank you for the release, the open heaven that have now we walked into your presence. And when you, we are in your presence, there's the fullness of joy. So we speak divine orchestration and we summon the angelic host and we pull it into the earth realm and we walk according to your purpose. So we thank you right now for the manifold grace, for we are world changers. We believe by faith that you called us to do a great work and we give and we operate in the abundance of your grace. So remove the scales from our eyes and stop our ears. Let our tongue be girded with truth. And when we speak, we destroy the yokes of bondage of the people that have been assigned to our voice. So we speak boldly, we speak with clarity, we speak with authority. And then when we speak, let it be sound that lives will be changed. So we thank you right now for this family. We thank you for this purpose. 
Except the Lord build the house, those who build it, build it in vain. Except the Lord guard it, those who guard it, guard it in vain. So I pray right now, hedge protection over every person that is assigned to change and be the change. So we thank you. Because of your grace and because of your mercy, we yield to the unction. So anoint us afresh and anew. Give us a boldness. For we come against the spirit of fear. For you not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So I speak sound minds right now. This information is readily and easily absorbed. So we honor you and we submit our will to you. Be glorified that no flesh will ever glow in your presence and that you will be exalted above any measure that we can comprehend or think. Now unto him is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can even ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So rise up, come forth. And we say thank you. And we decree it according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Officially, ladies and gentlemen, Amen. this will officially end this call. Have a wonderful evening.